name is Kay Byfield, and this is your Art Speak Studio moment from Art Speak Studio in Dallas, Texas. And today I want to talk about watercolor painting supports. And by that I mean paper, uh, watercolor board, uh, UPO, anything that an artist would use to paint on and explain how the different uh, materials are made and what they're about and how an artist chooses which one to paint on. Next week, I will give you a little demonstration about the differences in the ways that those different um, materials and the surfaces on those materials work. So let's get started. Watercolor is enjoyed because the paint is transparent, typically. And so traditionally, watercolor is painted from light to dark on the surface where you paint around your whites and successively paint darker, painting around the lighter colors. This has always been the traditional way to paint watercolor. So no opaque paints are used. But what this means is that the surface is really important. And so today we're gonna to talk about how you choose the correct surface for you and what your goals are. As I said, the surface of painting for watercolor is really important. And I always stress to students that the two things you really must have are professional grade papers and professional quality paints, no matter how inexperienced you are as a painter, because it makes a really big difference in how successful you can be with the paints. So when I talk about professional grade paper, I'm talking about surfaces that are designed specifically for watercolor and are pH neutral. Otherwise, the papers that you get will, will begin to deteriorate because of the acid and you do not want acid to contaminate your papers. If the paper is archival, meaning acid free, and it's taken care of, where no acid gets close to it, it will last forever. And that's what we all want. Watercolors are traditionally painted on watercolor papers. Um, there are board, you can take a board and you can treat it with gesso or you can buy an aqua board. Or the newest surface for watercolor paintings is a plastic manufactured material called UPO. I don't have any board with me today, but I am going to show you the difference between the papers and the UPO so that you can make a good decision for yourself. Papers are manufactured by um, a process where cotton rag is fibers are put into a slurry and beaten until they reach a consistency, I'm told something like oatmeal. And then a screen and felt are, are dipped into them. Some of that slurry sticks to the felt. It's allowed to dry and that's the paper. The paper will have some of the texture of the screen left in it. When it's in the slurry, there is a sizing that's put into the paper slurry that will balance how much of the paper paint goes through to into the paper is absorbed and how much of it stays on the surface. If there were no sizing, then the, the paper would act like a blotter and just soak up all the paint. So the amount of sizing, the kind of texture, those are the kinds of things that vary by manufacturer and you need to check them out and see which ones are the best fit for you. Watercolor paper comes in three thicknesses and the way that those thicknesses are determined is by the weight of the paper. The standard size for watercolor paper is 22 inches by 30 inches. If you take a stack of 100 sheets and you weigh it, that is the weight of the paper, and that's how we talk about the paper. 
So watercolor paper comes in three standard weights. Now there are other weights you might see, but those are different sized papers. But in general, the paper is always discussed on a 22 by 30 inch standard. If the paper is really thin and you take a hundred sheets of it and you stack it together, it will weigh 90 pounds. 90 pound paper is the thinnest standard weight for watercolor. So the next weight for watercolor paper is 140 pound paper. 140 pound paper means that a stack of 100 sheets that is 22 by 30 inches in, in size will weigh 140 pounds. And the heaviest weight paper is 300 pound paper. 300 pound paper means that a stack of 100 sheets would, would be 300 pounds. So as you can see, because it takes more sheets to, to weigh less, the paper would be thinner at 90 pounds. 140 is a nice in-between size and 300 pound is the heaviest. The reason why this matters is because it takes the water differently. 90 pound paper will buckle quite a lot. They'll get a lot of wrinkles in it because the paper absorbs water and it's so thin that it will, it will buckle up, it expands and it will buckle up. That makes it harder to paint on, but it also means that the paper will be cheaper to buy. 140 pound paper will buckle a lot less. And in fact, that's what I paint on typically because it's a nice compromise between the very expensive 300 pound paper and the very, very uh, buckly 90 pound paper. Um, I like 140 pound paper. I like the way that it takes the paint. I don't really like the way 300 pound paper takes the paint, but it does stay absolutely flat, which is a huge advantage. Artists make these choices based on what works best for them. Now, if you really need it to stay flat and you don't want to pay for 300 pound paper, you stretch your paper, which means that you actually shrink it. You get it really wet, you tape it or staple it down permanently to a board and when it dries, it will dry flat. And then when you paint on it subsequently, it will stay flat. Yupo also comes in three weights. It comes in heavy, medium, and translucent. And the choice would be based on what the artist was trying to accomplish with the paper. Um, because it is totally not absorbent, no paint goes into the paper. It sits absolutely on the surface. But Yupo is wonderful to draw on. It just, it just glides and feels so smooth. And artists choose it because they like the look of the paint sitting on that surface. When the paper is laid on the felt and allowed to dry, when it is removed, it will have a texture. And that texture can add a lot to a painting. That kind of paper where it is just taken off of the felt and dried um, and available to paint on is called rough paper. If a cold roller is run over the paper, then it's called cold pressed paper because it's been pressed by a cold roller. And if a hot roller is rolled over the paper, it is called hot pressed and it's hot pressed paper. And the, that surface quality changes the way the paper takes the paint. So now I've explained the different kinds of surfaces that you can paint on with watercolor, especially paper and Yupo. I didn't talk about watercolor boards. They're very similar to what Yupo would do. They do have a little bit of texture. Uh, I don't have any, so I, and I plan to demonstrate next week to show you how these painting surfaces make a big difference in the paint quality. In the meantime, I hope this information will be helpful and that we'll see you again here at another Art Speaks Studio moment. And in the meantime, happy painting.